Okay, so <clears throat> what do we got here? Uh, okay, the setup here, frequency generator, frequency counter, and oscope. Right now, <clears throat> the counter is connected to the generator to read out the, the frequency. This is calibrated. The scope bottom trace is the output from the generator, set to sine wave, obviously, down here. Um, this channel one is is this probe. You can see a little bit of the, this frequency bleeding in when I touch this. So, and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to input this this frequency adjustable as you can see um, and put it in one side read it read it out of the secondary but put it in the, to start with put it in the, inject the signal into the primary and uh, this top trace con uh, connection to uh, the secondary of this coil and I'm going to do so with it in the can, of course, as it will be in the radio. I want to know exactly where this thing resonates, as is, without me adjusting anything. Um, as a baseline. So, <clears throat> this witness mark up here, this dot, it's marked on here, so that's the hot side. And we'll make the other side ground. Uh, it's interesting. It's not drawing appreciable current, at least at this frequency, which is about 144 kilohertz. Um, don't really expect much different than that. And the other trace, this trace, will go ground on one side of the coal. Put from the other side of the coal. Well, we got quite a bit of signal there. And I'm dialing through, and there's a peak. Right. Call it 450 uh, kilohertz. It's about right. Um, that would likely be lower with this coil in circuit because of stray and uh, interelectrode tube interelectrode uh, capacitances. Um, would make that lower. Doubtful it would make it higher. So it's not really aligned well, at least as it is out of circuit definite peak there. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the phase of the secondary connection to my scope. Okay? You look, get an idea of this amplitude. I mean, that's pretty much the peak right there. I'm going to switch sides. Just reversing the connection to the scope. Look at that. Well, now there's the peak same spot, but the amplitude is much lower. It's important. Phasing, it matters. And if it don't work one way, try reversing them on each one. Uh, significant improvements could be had. <clears throat> it's safe to say that the way they have it in this radio, phase the way they do, is the proper way. But just to demonstrate or illustrate um, the difference it makes. These two coils, the primary and the secondary, I mean, this is basically what's going in the primary. That's what's coming out of the secondary. Just changing the connection to the secondary and reversing its phase drastically changed 
the, the amplitude. Why? Well, part of it here has to do with, the, there is a coupling. These instruments all have a common ground. Uh, so, there are leakages, RF couplings, you can't even imagine in this situation. So, let us turn this around and we'll put energy into the secondary and see what comes out of the primary. And I'm just going to connect these and there's already signal there. Yeah, looks pretty much the same. There's a definite peak there. What this coil's resonance or uh, what the primary and secondary average resonance is it's saying 448 should be 455 in circuit but it's not in circuit well as I said in circuit adding capacitance to this would tend to in, uh, decrease its resonance its resonant frequency it may be because the uh, capacitor in there is is a uh, capacitor. So these two are not doing well. That it's it's acting like it is. When the leakage part isn't a problem, the leakage between these two caps, high voltage to low voltage, isn't a problem. But it does work. The radio does work. Um, so. Bottom line, coil, the coils themselves in this transformer are in decent shape. It's just that damn capacitor in there that's, that's causing the grief. So, and I'll do the same thing. I'll reverse the phase of the scope, the top trace, and does the same thing. Not unusual at all. If there's a capacitive coupling between the windings taking place uh, as well and when you reverse the phase of things um, that capacitance that capacitance uh, the coupling capacity capacitance coupling can augment uh, or uh, damp the interrelation between the two separate coils in the, in the transformer um, Another thing worth noting, I'll leave this connected as I have had it. All of this has been done with the, the shield can on, which is, it's, it needs to be there um, for a number of reasons. So let me, let me peep this. That's, that's, you know, for this in, that's about the most you get out at I'll call it 450 kilohertz. Well, watch what happens when the can comes off. Quite different. So, why? What happened? It, de it changes the tuning of it. Well, it's got a new spot that it peaks. 426. Aluminum acts a little bit differently than iron does. It will, um, it changes the permeability of, of things. It, it, it acts like a, a bunch of shorted turns. So the, the can definitely plays a role. Never ever, unless you plan on running the radio without the can, and I don't recommend you doing that, feedback on uh, self-oscillation and things. Tune every, always tune it with the can where it is going to be in the radio. It matters. Uh, sometimes the difference is, is striking. Depending on how you have things phased, maybe I can demonstrate that. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's let's go back. Put 
coming there. Feed the signal into that one up here. Put come in here and pick the signal off of that one. And see where it peaks. And not much going on there. Not much going on there. Let's change how we look at the output. Yeah. Change the phase of the input. And that's at 432. 432 kilohertz. Yeah. At any rate, let's put this can on. Four fifty-four. See how that works? All of this stuff matters. You you have to pay attention to it. So the next step is going to be to carefully note everything, put witness marks, desolder these wires which are like hair. <clears throat> Fortunately there's uh, enough slack to work with and you can, if you have to, peel back a little bit but try to avoid that. Um, remove the, the coil form get that capacitor out of there and uh, kind of put it back together and tack on some maybe some mica dipped micas or whatever and, and get this guy back back in uh, resonance put it in and well tack it in at least and uh, see if we can get her working better but it's it's not going to work the way it is oh yeah one more thing, <clears throat> another test, don't need the case for this one, leakage through, um, I'm just going to tie the common from the generator to the common on the scope, which is already connected really anyway, so anything getting through looks like that. So I'm going to go from primary connection, leave the other side of the primary open, connect to the secondary connection. There we go. That, that signal should not be showing there up top. That's the leakage across from this capacitor to that one because they have a common dielectric that is leaking. Uh, let's bump this amplitude up a little. That's leaking through and it, it doesn't matter that's 144 kilohertz. That's uh, a little over 300, uh, 311 kilohertz. So it's we're not seeing any resonance in the coils or, or, or anything like that. This is that's all coupling through in these capacitors where it should not be. Now it's I've got things cranked up pretty sensitively here. There's some bleed through. But that's that's a problem. That's a problem. Actually that's because it's on the same coil. So I'm only putting a few volts of, of, of AC RF into this coil transformer. <clears throat> You know, you get a hundred volts of difference between DC, between the primary and the secondary. This, this leakage is, is going to wreak havoc, uh, which manifests as popping and clicking and poor reception. That's, that's this guy's fault. And we're going to fix him. <laughs>